This is uh, NBC News reporting. You want to pull, pull that one up? There you go. Trump will announce Trump has continued to falsely assert that he won the 2020 election, but that he was denied office by rampant fraud. If uh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of I'm going to say this right away. If Donald Trump launches his 2024 campaign announcement off of 2022 complaints about fraud, I think he's going to spiral, crash and burn. I, I know a lot of people have people have reached out to me and said, Tim, if Trump doesn't address this stuff, it won't get resolved. And that may be. But um, I think that it is too esoteric and it is confusing for younger voters. I think it is it is Trump's revenge, Trump's retribution. Trump 2020 is not the message we need. I think Trump needs to come out and say, Biden screwed you over and you all know it. Let me fix it. Yeah, I mean, the American people are going through a lot of problems right now, especially financially, especially when it comes to our foreign policy, especially when it comes to having a leader that can't even read his own notes at the G20 and has to go take a nap and not meet with the foreign delegations uh, that are meeting at this prestigious dinner. Not prestigious, but you know what I mean here. Uh, if, if he's going to be smart here, he's going to be talking about America's problems, how he could solve it, the future, how his presidency would look like, how he would be different than he was before. But if he does focus on the past, I do think he's going to be losing a lot of people. The Independent is reporting that he's trying to convince Ivanka and Jared to join him on this announcement. So it's going to be interesting to see who stands behind him, who's there. Candace Owens made some very interesting statements a couple of days ago saying that Trump now has someone around him that's trying to push away the populist based, trying to push away Candace her, uh, herself away from Donald Trump. So it's going to be interesting who's there, what he's going to be saying, and essentially what are going to be his plans hopefully that he's going to be talking about and not talking about the past. Yeah, I agree. I think if he's going to come out and complain about his feelings about what happened to him and his election and, and the processes and everything, he needs to display a solution immediately. Like, he needs to come out and say, this will help us prevent this from happening again. These free software systems, for instance, voting online on a blockchain, for instance, things that are transparent, voting, voting online on like nine different blockchains so they can all be referenced. But I have a feeling he's going to come out and complain and not offer any solutions and just get the, the angry people behind him again like he did last and time. And if, he, if he's really smart, he's going to be talking about ballot harvesting. He's going to be talking about mail-in ballots and also talking about a plan to deal with all of that along with big tech social media censorship, which stands in the way of Republicans ever winning any kind of political office. Well, look, I mean, people, I think I think the biggest mistake that, that people on the other side of the election integrity issue have made is... Whether, whether they believe the assertions or not, they have totally ignored the concerns that people have, right? R regardless of whether the root yeah. is, is true or not, what they've done is instead of saying, look, I get you have concerns, and this voting issue is sort of the cornerstone of a constitutional republic, and so we need to, we need to do everything we can to shore this up, right? We go back to the DEF CON report uh, from 2019 where, it, where uh, they had Voting Village and were able to hack all those machines, right? But no one ever addressed That's the concerns. That's DEFCON, the hacker convention. Right, the hacker convention, yeah. right? So th they showed that electronic voting machines are susceptible. And so instead of addressing those issues and saying, okay, look, we get it. Every machine in, voter, in the voter village got hacked. What they did was they decided to marginalize and, and essentially tell people, look, if you have any concerns about this, you're just a whack job conspiracy theorist. And so, you know, is that a running issue for Trump? I don't think so. It's always got to be about, you know, for most people about the economy. Well, but so it, it has those those issues do have to be addressed. It, it is one. I think what we saw in the midterms, Republicans tried really hard for the most part to focus on what the Democrats were doing wrong and things they didn't like or things they wanted to get rid of. CRT in schools was a big issue, probably because people saw young can succeed. But I, if, if you're going after the fraud narrative, you are not explaining to people what you want to do other than we were done wrong yeah. and we want the system to correct that, that injustice. And if you're coming out and just saying, hey, we're going to show up our energy policy, we're going to lower you know, interest rates or, or whatever, we're going to make the economy better, then you're ignoring another big problem. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Ballot harvesting is a major issue. Republicans thought they could they could target issue, target you know political and cultural issues and that would them get them a victory, without realizing the ballot harvesting operation is intense. That ballot harvesting not fraud. There is some fraudulent ballot harvesting, but in 39 states they're allowed to do it. I believe 13 states have no restrictions whatsoever, and we've even heard some officials say that you can harvest as many votes as you want so long as that person signs off that you are designated to do so. And so that is a major disadvantage. 
if Republicans aren't tackling that and, and focusing on either building a ballot harvesting operation like Democrats have, then they're going to lose. If you campaign on that, mm. people are going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. So it's 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 difficult. I understand that. You know what Republicans need is a vote by drone campaign where you designate a drone <laughs> as your harvester. It comes to your house, picks it up because no yeah. one can has the time to drive yeah. for six hours a day from from giant farm to giant farm. We just need drones doing it. Well, look, it's uh, here's. The, we could talk about the the election integrity issues, and that's obviously a big concern down in Texas. I mean, we're we're all over that. We're we're still dealing right now in Harris County, largest county in Texas, most populous county in Texas, uh, dealing with just an absolute ab abortion of an election day. Right? I mean, we've been joking and calling it East Maricopa County. Um, <laughs> so you know, I mean, it's it's been it's been horrible, uh, but. You know, if we're talking about issues that are, that are going to motivate voters, I mean, I, I just look at what's motivated our base, right? What has led the Texas issue to become to become the issue for sixty six percent of likely voters, right? If Texas was on the ballot tomorrow, sixty six percent of likely voters in Texas would vote in, in Texas would vote in favor, and the, and the reasons are, are pretty clear. Number one, they believe the federal government is too big, too bloated, federal overreach, right? Too intrusive in their lives. And, and it's the border and immigration. For 15 years, the border and immigration together as an issue have polled as the number one concern for Texas voters. Uh, when we see uh, the same number of illegal immigrants cross the border from Mexico into Texas every month, that's higher than the number of allied troops that landed on the beaches of Normandy at D-Day, that is massive. And, and it goes unresolved and, and unaddressed. And so uh, if you're going to have, uh, it, look, if Donald Trump wanted to make some fans tonight, he would come out and say, I'm running for president. And what I'm going to do, my number one issue is to put it on the ballot for every state to determine whether they want to stay in the union or not. Oh, you know? geez. I, I, thought you were gonna, I, I thought, would love to see that. <laughs> that I thought, Ed Cannon, Ed I thought Cannon. you were going to say he was going to come out and say, build the wall. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe between, you know, it was funny. I was interviewed by the New York Times one time. And they said, do you think that uh, do you think that the United States ought to put troops on the river? And we said, absolutely. Let's put them all along the Red River because we're tired of the snowbirds coming in the winter. Um, geography well, lesson, the Red River is between us and Oklahoma. So that's hmm. another story. Oh, that's I, funny. I think it's also. That <laughs> <laughs> one went over our heads. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I, th I think it's also fair to ask, is Donald Trump going to be successful here? Here, Is he going to win? Because he's facing off against Biden, who, who's weak. But again, is he going to deal with the mail-in ballots, b ballot harvesting? Is he going to be attacked by the establishment? Is the DOJ still going to be going after him? The Washington Post is reporting right now that the DOJ is saying that if Trump runs, this is not going to stop the Justice Department criminal probe of Donald Trump. So if the Justice Department goes after him, I see that actually lifting him up and actually helping him, especially when it comes to the popularity. And if he's running against a Nikki Haley, a Mike Pompeo, a Mike Pence, all the, the goblins of the D.C. swamp that he helped enable, then I see something that's going to be successful here. If he runs against Ron DeSantis, uh, it's going to be a tough battle. It's not I, going no, to be an easy one. What but about not, but it's not going to be a tough battle necessarily. One way, the way I look at it is Ron DeSantis and Trump in a primary will be the best possible thing for Republicans and whatever the more liberty minded faction is, because Trump will have to find a way to contend with DeSantis's popularity and success policy wise. And DeSantis will have to find a way to overcome Donald Trump's gravitas, his imposing figure, his quick wit. That primary is going to make both of them very, very good. And whoever can't win it doesn't deserve to win it. If Trump goes in there and just crushes DeSantis and policy becomes completely irrelevant, then it deserves to. If you can't convince people to vote on the merits, then you don't deserve to be the nominee. So but if DeSantis comes in and says, bing, bang, boom, here's what I've done. And it resonates with people and Trump is unable to counter that, then Trump doesn't deserve to take it. What, what about Carrie Lake? You guys think she's going to run for president? No. Because no. she just she, thought she Katie Hobbs, who was overseeing the election in Arizona, won the election. Uh, so now Carrie Lake lost the election. Yeah, but um, she's not in office. She's not in politics. She's she, famous, she, though. And she's well-liked. I don't think it would be good if she ran... It, just not good for the people Republican are going to be well, saying no, if never she can't, held office. Yeah, people are going to say if she can't win a state election, what makes her what makes her think that she could Trump win never, a national? Trump one? wasn't a politician before he won. Good yeah, point. but 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 Trump's Trump was massively famous though. The, just, the, the, just it's true. Got on board. It's true. But but you know, I, I guess we can see. I just don't like the idea of these people who lose elections just trying to up their election up game. The like, ante. like Beto or yeah, Abrams. Yeah. Like, I was Carrie about to La say, that sounds very familiar to me. <laughs> I, I think if Carrie Lake, if uh, she should fight 110%, I believe that everybody should be protesting 
peacefully in Arizona. There's 1.3, 1.2 million people voted for. All 1.2 million should be out in the streets, especially in Maricopa, but just because the, the 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 busted up voting machines disenfranchised people, and you don't even know who left the lines, who went home because of because of the failure of the voting process, and that benefits Democrats. So I will stress this: the difference between fraud and impropriety. The different so fraud is initially the narrative was voting machines, stealing votes, um, people forging ballots and things like that. Now it seems like people are saying the fraud narrative is ballot harvesting and um, voting machines breaking. And I'm like, okay, well, that's a different conversation. If the voting machines are just garbage and can't adequately handle the, the, the amount of people that are coming in to vote, then Democrats are winning because they do the early mail-in votes. If the issue is ballot harvesting and it's legal in these states— then Democrats are winning because they have found a way to just get the numbers. And it's a horrifying prospect. It doesn't matter anymore to win the hearts and minds of the people. It matters to convince someone who's not paying attention to sign their name to a piece of paper, and then you leave and they don't even know what it was about. I was looking That's at scary. Katie Hobbs' uh, Wikipedia page, and one of the last sentences in the 2022 gubernatorial election section is that Hobbs decided not to debate the Republican nominee, Carrie Lake, to deny Lake a platform to spread election denialism. <laughs> you deny uh, a candidate a chance to speak. Is that not a form of election denialism? It's not the same thing. It's not the same it's, thing, it's, but it's, what it's a, a weird sentence. Yeah. yeah, she denied Carrie an I'll opportunity you, let me, to, let me, because she was going to deny something. Let me, let me tell you. Uh, well, real I'll, quick, what was, what was Katie Hobbs' role in the, in the Arizona election exactly? Because I've heard she's in charge of it. I just want to yes. be clear. What was her role? Secretary of State. She was the Secretary of State of her yeah. own election. Yeah. So was, an, so she was didn't recuse word. herself. Yes, so was Brian Kemp. I just got to make it. And it doesn't excuse either of them. It doesn't excuse either of them. But I'm seeing so many people come out and being like, I can't believe something like this would happen. And it's like, yeah, and Brian Kemp did the same but thing. But how is it legal? And, I, that's and we what said it shouldn't have happened then and it shouldn't be happening now. But uh, uh, the system is just this just r- ridiculous, stupid, broken system. So so it, it's it's annoyingly frustrating. And no, you're right. Maybe it, it should not be allowed. It shouldn't have been allowed back then. It shouldn't be allowed now. I mean, leave it to the global superpower to screw up the fact that you should write on a piece of paper and put it in a box and then count how many pieces of paper in that box have the same thing written on it, right? I mean, we've we've thrown in, we've decided to computerize our, our elections. We've made them all electronic, completely ignoring the fact that you have all the technical experts who come out and say anything, you know, all of these machines are susceptible, right? And, and so here we are, we've overcomplicated a system that you know, we could trace back to, uh, you know, Athene- <laughs> Athens, Greece, centuries ago, you know, 2,000 years ago plus, 3,000 years. You know, we're looking at the Athenians perfected this sort of system where they would even write on a shard of pottery, right? But here we are. We've overcomplicated it and allegedly in the world's only superpower still standing uh, where this is supposed to be the the benchmark of, of uh, civilization, right? Democratic civilization. We figured out a way to screw it up, or at least the bureaucrats have. Here, here, here's what I want to see. I want to see Donald Trump come out tonight and say, gas prices are too high. We need energy independence. And energy independence. Our border is porous and worse than it's ever been. I want him to come out and say, we need to bring jobs back. We need to bring factories back. Mm-hmm. We need to stop this military expansion. The war in Ukraine is not America's business. I am. That's what I want. I want want to hear MAGA. I want to hear Donald Trump talk about how he wants to make this country great. I want to hear him tell a story about uh, a a nice family sitting out in their backyard in a rocking chair. Dad's reading the paper. Mom's coming out with some fresh sun tea. Kids are playing. And he's talking about how the working class is going to have a better chance at succeeding in this country. If it is an issue with the the ballot harvesting all that stuff, that's a matter for their strategy to win, but not to win the hearts and minds of the people. To win the election, I get. I just kind of feel like if they come out and they don't talk about issues, they're offering up nothing of substance. You know what I mean? mean, Look, you're talking talking salesmanship and, you know, salesmanship versus statesmanship, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, let's be honest. He could get up there and he could paint the prettiest of pictures about what he would intend to do, right? The, the whole MAGA, MAGA thing, right? Make America great again. But let, let's be honest at what the situation is. The federal government is terminally broken, right? Four years where he was going to drain the swamp, the swamp is deeper than it's ever been, right? Our lives are still controlled 
under 180,000 pages of federal laws, rules, and regulations administered by 440 separate agencies and 2.5 million unelected federal bureaucrats, right? The federal debt has gone up to the point now that our children's 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 children are still going to be paying on it, right? So nothing got done. Our tax money is being taken, paid to overpaid civil servants. Most of them make more than the governor of our state, right? Where that money in turn is funneled back into Democratic coffers that are out there now openly pushing neo-Marxist theory and philosophy as public policy. The, the, so he can promise whatever he wants to promise, but at the end of the day, the federal system, anything connected to it, is going to be tainted just like it is, and we're, it, we might as well be tethered to the Titanic headed to the bottom of the North Atlantic. I'm curious if he's going to announce you know, $2,000 checks for everyone, just like he did Ten grand. <laughs> last I, time. $10,000. No, no, hold on. Out. In, in all seriousness, <laughs> I would accept if Donald Trump comes out and says, I am going to be running on one platform Everyone gets $15,000 cash. Oh, so he joined the Yang gang. Well, yeah. de Demo <laughs> Joe Biden came out and offered ten grand to everybody in their pocket unconstitutionally, wow. and they, they vote for it. No, no. So uh, there you go. If the system is going to crumble and fall, then Trump may as well just come out and be like, sure, I'll play. I just He'll need 15, 20, 30. Why not I need 50? one word from Trump. Graphene. We're going to build <laughs> the greatest graphene production facility on Earth. The Everyone. best. We Everyone. are the best. All his Everyone's friends confused. know. I've been They're obsessively telling his friends when they come here to be on our show, tell Donald Trump, graphene, this is it. This is the future. We become a graphene industrialist nation. Do it, Donald. This is your chance. And this they, is it, baby. They leave thinking like, that was cool. That guy's kind of weird. Yeah, you got to be a little <laughs> we, more specific. We also have to remember when Donald Trump was, was running uh, in 2016, he was promising a lot of things. He was talking about ending the Federal Reserve. He was he was hinting at not eleven conspiracies. He was hitting, uh, you know, out of the park when it came to going at the media one on one. Is he going to be that same Donald Trump from two thousand and sixteen? We're going to see. But I think a lot of people want solutions, not complaining. And if he's going to be complaining, he's going to lose a lot of his base. Look, look, as a lot of people are already saying, hey, I, I, there's there's no reason I should be supporting this because this is not going to help anyone. Thanks for watching. Watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.